dealing with the embouchure, there's uh, two kinds that are the most common, single lip and double lip. Uh, single lip, we have, uh, we use our lower lip to cover our bottom teeth and we put the reed on the bottom, which is what has been uh, the most traditional way of playing the clarinet since the 1820s when the Germans started doing it. Before that, the clarinet was being used with the reed on top, so it basically, you were forced to use double lip, okay? Now, the advantage to a single lip is that because you're having your upper teeth on the mouthpiece, you can actually have a more secure grip on the mouthpiece because you are actually using your teeth to hold on to the mouthpiece. Uh, and therefore, it feels easier to play standing, etc. Now, in double lip, we basically have both lips uh, touching, the, having the contact on the mouthpiece. Now, I must admit that I have yet to find somebody who does not sound better playing double lip than single lip, myself included. But I, st I started in single lip and then, you know, it's one of these things that I, uh, I got busy and never re really spent the time to get myself 1,000% uh, familiar or, or confident using double lip. But I definitely use it a great deal of times now, especially for playing lyrical solos and for practicing. Because using double lip, um, we get... Uh, there's one very important thing that happens, which is that when we curl the upper lip around the teeth, there is a physical phenomenon that we it just we naturally do that is that the uh, the tongue gets curled inside. Now, when the tongue gets curled, if you try that, just be normal and then uh, and then cover your uh, your teeth, your upper teeth with your with your lips, you will see that the tongue starts uh, getting curled. Now, that curl is actually extremely important for voicing, which we'll be talking later, but it's for getting the proper uh, clarinet sound uh, to go. So when one uses double lip, the, one of the advantages is that the voicing will be better. We can definitely play with a better way of uh, blowing through the instrument. And because we're doing uh, the double lip, that we avoid clamping down, which is one of the side effects of single lips because we feel stronger, we can just produce too much pressure on the, on the mouthpiece. And we have also a bigger oral cavity. When we have a bigger oral cavity, then we actually have more resonance for the sound. The other thing that is really important and advantageous about using double lip is that uh, we get a better connection with how our fingers move. Now, at the beginning, when we try double lip, it will feel like it's unstable, and a lot of people who uh, uh, criticize the double lip approach say that it's actually very unstable to play because the, the mouth gets uh, tired and, and most people cannot uh, play for a long time do, uh, playing double lip. But if we start to cons uh, stop to think about the fact that if we have been playing professionally or at student level, you know, college level, we have been playing single lip for eight, ten years, and then we try to apply that to the upper lip all of a sudden, it's, you know, the upper lip has to play catch up. So it will be natural and it's okay for it to feel a little bit sluggish at the beginning. Uh, and eventually we will uh, create strength for the whole facial musculature. Now, um, the other thing is that you have to be thinking about is that if that were true that playing double lip is unstable for the instrument, then oboe players wouldn't be able to play standing. They would have to be holding their instrument or bassoon players, you see. So it's uh, not necessarily uh, a valid point to be thinking that if one plays double lip, then the instrument will be unstable. Yes, it will be unstable for a little bit while we're getting our strength, but it definitely helps to be able to uh, play with a more uh, fluid tone and better finger technique. One of the other things that we have to think about in double lip is that we have uh, gotten so used to getting so many instructions of, oh, chin down, lips to the side, make sure to pucker the, uh, to curl the upper uh, lip in a way that imitates uh, double lip. And all the things are basically correct, but they are false. It's just, uh, will be as effective as me trying to describe how do you do a wink to a girl you really like, or you get the angle, you're, it's ridiculous to be thinking that way. You have to, you practice like uh, we all did in, uh, uh, in fifth grade, how, how to do the wings in front of the mirror, and then you hope for the best. But uh, one of the things that I would like to show you is that when we think about single lip and, and chin down and, and the lips to the side, it can create a little 
bit of tension thinking that is like a rigid process of getting an embouchure. Uh, <laughs> That is the single lip, which is the normal way that I play. Now, when we do double lip, we will put both lips touching the mouthpiece, so no teeth contact on the mouthpiece. Both. Now, the uh, effect that it feels for me is that then I am definitely in better touch and better contact with what I'm doing with the fingers and how I am managing the air. Now, it might be a little bit difficult to uh, hear the difference, uh, uh, for, uh, but the way that we can definitely see uh, the differences and hear it is when we play something slow, like. That's in single, and then we'll try the double lip. So right there, I, I felt that I could understand exactly when I was going to move the air and increase the tension to the sound. Okay, so what I would recommend is uh, to practice double lip at least five minutes a day, just five minutes. Then we will be able to get used to the musculature of the face and what the feel of having that open uh, uh, aperture in the mouth, the inside of the mouth, and how we are using the uh, the upper lip, and then we try to imitate it as we play single lip. I think that uh, if you do it every day, five minutes, and then after a couple of weeks you add just one minute per uh, per week, uh, you, you will feel more and more confident to use it, and then uh, you might even decide to play double lip which is uh, completely advantageous in every single way about uh, playing the clarinet. It's one of the things that, unfortunately, I must admit that it's one of the things that I'm doing as, say, uh, do as I say, nor as I do. But uh, it, it is one of those things that even I, uh, that I'm using more and more, and it's one of the things that I regret not doing all the time because I, I do know that I sound better, but it's just a matter of habit. So we are always have, I'm having an inner conflict myself. Just uh, just come on, let's go ahead and, and just do it because I know it, it definitely improves my finger technique, my staccato, my legato. So I'm basically working uh, harder than I have to just out of habit. So be smarter than I am and try to use double leg little by little. <laughs> <laughs>